This tutorial is all about the reaction that produces sulfuric acid. And sulfuric acid is a very important industrial chemical. Not only is it used in car batteries as battery acid, it's also used in the manufacture of detergents, dyes, plastics, fertilizers such as ammonium sulfate, and finally it's used in the tanning industry, tanning of leather. The process that we're going to learn about is called the contact process. It's a method of making sulfuric acid by starting with sulfur, converting that into sulfur dioxide, and then via a reversible reaction that reaches equilibrium, we get sulfur trioxide, which by a rather roundabout route is combined with water to make sulfuric acid. Now beware, because for this one, there's a certain amount of understanding, but there are also some facts to be learnt. You must learn that reaction. So sulfur dioxide plus oxygen making sulfur trioxide and also in symbols. And you must learn the conditions used, the name of the catalyst, which is vanadium 5 oxide or V2O5, the exact temperature, 450 degrees, and the fact that it's performed not at high pressure, but at normal atmospheric pressure. So, this is a summary of how sulfuric acid is made. First of all, sulfur is burned in air to make sulfur dioxide gas, or that sulfur dioxide gas is obtained from some other place, for example, from the emissions of power stations. Sulfur dioxide is then mixed with air, a source of oxygen, and passed over this vanadium 5 oxide catalyst at 450 degrees Celsius and at atmospheric pressure to make an equilibrium mixture which contains sulfur trioxide. But because it's a reversible reaction, it contains sulfur dioxide, oxygen and sulfur trioxide all mixed together. Now this reaction is exothermic, that means it gives out heat. But a high temperature is used to ensure it's got a fast rate. Because the reaction forwards is exothermic, then the reaction backwards is endothermic, and therefore increasing the temperature actually encourages the reverse reaction and reduces the yield of sulfur trioxide. But that's okay, because it's more important to get a small percentage of sulfur trioxide, but at a high rate of reaction, than it is to have a massive yield made slowly. It's also important to understand that an increased pressure would not only increase the rate of reaction but also increase the yield of the sulfur trioxide. So why don't they use a high pressure? Well, the use of a catalyst is enough to get a fast rate of reaction and therefore a high pressure isn't needed. A high pressure would be very costly in terms of energy for the pumps and would also mean the reaction would have to be done in very, very strong equipment, which would be expensive to set up. The sulfur trioxide that's made is removed from that mixture, and it's dissolved in 98% sulfuric acid to make another chemical, which is called oleum. This is oleum here. That oleum is diluted with water to make 98% sulfuric acid again, but more of it and therefore some of it is sold and some of it is put back into the process to have more sulfur trioxide dissolved in it. Like in most industrial processes any unreacted sulfur dioxide or air is recycled back into the process to save costs. Automation is also used wherever possible again to save wages bill. Here's a diagrammatic summary of that so we're starting off with sulfur or an ore which contains some sulphur. This sulphur is roasted in a furnace using oxygen from the air which reacts with the sulphur to make sulphur dioxide. The sulphur dioxide is then combined with oxygen from the air and passed over a catalyst of vanadium 5 oxide at a high temperature of around 450 degrees at atmospheric pressure. This makes a mixture which includes sulphur trioxide. The sulfur trioxide is then dissolved in 98% sulfuric acid to make this chemical oleum, which is then diluted with water to make sulfuric acid again. Some of that sulfuric acid is sold and some of it is put back into the process. 
At higher level, you need to be able to explain, not just remember, but explain the conditions. You need to know that increasing the temperature moves the position of equilibrium to the left and also increases the rate of reaction. So a compromised temperature is reached. But the addition of a catalyst increases the rate but doesn't affect the position of equilibrium and that a low pressure, atmospheric pressure is used because it's uh, got a fast enough rate by now and using a high pressure would cost too much money. So here are the conditions and explaining why we use these conditions. Recapping, the conditions are a temperature of around 450 degrees, a catalyst of vanadium 5 oxide and atmospheric pressure. Here's the reversible reaction, sulphur dioxide and oxygen making sulphur trioxide, all gases, but the reaction is exothermic, going from left to right, and that means that the reaction going from right to left is endothermic or requires heat. So why is the temperature of 450 degrees used? Well, increasing the temperature shifts the equilibrium to the left, and that's not a good thing. And it does this because increasing the temperature increases the chances of the endothermic reaction occurring because the endothermic reaction requires heat. And so by something called Le Chatelier's principle, the equilibrium shifts to the left in order to use up that increased temperature in the form of heat and gets rid of it. Now that's not good because that reduces our yield of sulphur trioxide. But that's okay because a high temperature also does another thing. It increases the rate of reaction and means that what sulphur trioxide we do get is made nice and fast. So this 450 degrees is a kind of compromise temperature. Not so high as to reduce the yield completely, but high enough to get a decent rate of reaction. Why do we use the vanadium oxide catalyst? Well, this increases the rate of reaction, but like all catalysts, has no effect on the position of equilibrium because it speeds up the forward and the backward reaction equally. And finally, why do we use atmospheric pressure and not a high pressure? Well, a high pressure would increase the rate of reaction and it would also increase the yield of the reaction because three volumes of gas are being squeezed down to two and a high pressure will do that very effectively. But even at low pressure, the rate using the catalyst is fast enough and therefore using a high pressure would just be very costly and very little benefit. Here's a past paper question. Sulfur, air and water are raw materials used to make sulfuric acid. Sulfuric acid is made by the contact process. Complete the word equation for the first stage of the contact process. Something plus something gives sulfur dioxide. Well, that's going to be sulfur plus oxygen from the air gives sulfur dioxide. Then the sulfur dioxide reacts with oxygen in a reversible reaction to make sulfur trioxide and then the sulfur trioxide by a rather roundabout route is reacted with water to make sulfuric acid. Now look at stage 2. The conditions used for stage 2 are 450 degrees, an atmospheric pressure and a catalyst. What's the name or formula of the catalyst used? Well the formula is V2O5 or it's called vanadium 5 oxide. Now explain the conditions used in the contact process using ideas about rate of reaction and position of equilibrium. Using a catalyst, uh, a catalyst increases the reaction rate but on the position of equilibrium it has no effect. And then the temperature, this is a bit more complicated because on the rate of reaction it gives a sufficiently high rate of reaction but in terms of the position the equilibrium is not too far to the left. And there's our answers. 
So in the first one, it's sulfur plus oxygen making sulfur dioxide. The catalyst was vanadium oxide or vanadium 5 oxide or V2O5. And the use of the catalyst was increasing the rate of reaction but not changing position of equilibrium. And the 450 degrees was a sufficiently high rate of reaction but doesn't push the position of equilibrium too much to the left. And there are some alternative answers there as well.